I'm Kurt. I'm 41 years old. My wife Michelle is three years younger than me. We have been married for 10 years. We have a son and daughter in elementary school. I have a run-of-the-mill white-collar job. A family of four, living quite modestly. But one day, things took a turn. One day at work, I received a letter in the mail. It was a plain brown envelope with no sender's name written on it. I nervously opened it and discovered something unexpected inside. Inside was photos of my wife on a date with a stranger, and even photos of her entering a hotel. There was also a letter inside, which read, I apologize for the sudden letter. To be completely straightforward, your wife is having an affair. The person she's having an affair with is her boss. I am a colleague of your wife's boss. I will reveal this information to the company next week. Your wife and her boss are even spotted entering hotels during work hours together. It's a violation of workplace rules. Demotions, or in the worst case, termination, are all possibilities. If it becomes clear that the case is a double affair, rumors will start circulating and they may be forced to resign from the company. I'm sorry to be saying such threatening things. Can we meet as soon as possible? The contents of the letter were so detailed, I was taken aback by the suddenness of the letter, but I don't believe it was a prank. I decided to call the number on the letter. The phone call was picked up immediately. A man answered. I told him I had seen the letter. I apologize for the sudden of the letter. Your wife, who just also happened to be my subordinate, is having an affair. We had someone investigate at the credit agency to find your place of work. If I had sent the letter to your house, there was a chance your wife would have seen the letter, so I sent it to your office. When I asked if the affair was really true, he said he had requested information about me from the credit bureau for over a month, and they had investigated. He replied that it was not a mistake. As I wrote and requested in the letter, could we meet? I know the letter was sudden, so it may be hard to believe me, he said. Based on his demeanor, it was clear he was being truthful. I decided to meet him. After work that day, I went and met the sender of the letter at a nearby cafe. When I went there, I found an older man with a calm demeanor waiting for me there. After greeting one another, the sender played me back audio evidence. It's possible I'm pregnant with your child. You don't intend for me to give birth, do you? Of course, but let's pretend it's my husband's child. No, no, that's not going to work. It'll be exposed. I'll pay for the abortion fees. No, it'll be okay. Both you and my husband have blood type A, so our affair won't be revealed by blood type. Besides, around the same time, I had sex with my husband without contraception, so it'll be okay. At this point, the sender stopped playing the audio, and he repeated it to me again, even though I was at a loss for words. As this audio shows, your wife is having an affair with her boss, and she may be pregnant. That woman. There's no mistaken, that's my wife's voice. Of course, I'm devastated, but come to think about it, my two children are already in elementary school. There was an instance where she asked to have a third child. We hadn't done it for a while. I told her I was tired and that we should do it another time, but she was very forceful that we had to do it on that day. Faced with this realization, I remained silent, so the sender spoke up. I will submit this information all to the company next week, but my goal is not to force your wife into a corner. My goal is to bring down her lover. The sender claimed that he was blamed for all the lover's mistakes and passed over for a promotion because of him. He apparently was thinking of taking revenge someday when he started to hear rumors about the affair. He found the information to be useful, so he investigated and confirmed that to be the case. He has no grudge against my wife, but it was a situation she got herself involved in, so he wants me to tell her to voluntarily resign. If she voluntarily resigns, she will receive a severance. The sender had a serious face, but if that's the case, why didn't he tell my wife directly? Instead, he's telling me about it. I didn't understand and was quite confused. However, my wife is having an affair, and the thought of her having a child with another man makes it unbearable to continue being with her. I went home, and after my children went to bed, I talked to my wife directly, one-on-one. -on -one. So, today I received something like this today from someone today. I took all the evidence sent from the sender and spread it on the table. My wife was surprised and asked what it was. This is your boss, isn't it? You're having an affair. I have heard about it all, so please tell me the truth. I told her this while staring intently at her face. My wife averted her gaze and slumped down. She admitted it, surprisingly without denial. I'm sorry, I betrayed you. You're not mistaken. Well, so it's true that you might be pregnant, I asked her. My wife looked up in a state of panic and said, I'm sorry, there's a chance it might be your child. 
Those words irritated me. No matter whose child it is, the fact that you're pregnant is not going to change. When I said that, my wife lowered her head again. I sighed and kept talking. Next week, the fact that your boss and you are having an affair and the fact that you're pregnant will be made known to your company. The person who sent the evidence only resents your lover, not you. So before things get bigger, I'm telling you to stop it yourself. I don't know how much it will affect you, so just be prepared for it. I then told my wife that we'd be living separately for a while. My wife lowered her head and started to cry. The next morning, my wife went to work as usual, but I took the kids and headed home to my parents' home. We're probably going to get divorced sooner rather than later, but until then, it's not possible for me to live together with my wife. Around noon, my wife sent a text message. Apparently, she relayed her intentions to resign from the company. That due to her child's sudden illness, she's going to have to resign by the weekend. It was pretty sudden. It would have been a problem for her workplace, but it doesn't matter to me. I responded to her unemotionally. I told her I had taken the kids to my parents' house. I knew she wasn't going to like it, but her reply was that she understood. I believe she still loved the kids. Maybe she was too upset to do anything about it. A few weeks later, I received a call from the same sender of the letter. I see your wife has resigned, then I'll go ahead and put my plan into action. And the sender of the original letter reported to the company the incident of the affair between the two employees. He also mailed the same evidence to the wife of my wife's lover. The fact that my wife's lover had went to a hotel during working hours was a violation of company policies, and he was soon internally transferred to a distant satellite office. And then one day, I got a call from my wife's lover's actual wife saying she wanted to talk to me immediately. We agreed to meet. The other man's wife said she had an elderly mother to take care of and that her children were still young. That divorce would be financially difficult on her. My husband is going to be transferred to a satellite office and planning to live separately from him but would still receive money from him. I thought she was strong for saying that while laughing. So in the discussion that followed, we decided that we would each claim alimony. And since it was not clear whose child that was, I suggested that we do a DNA test. Let's do that. I think you should be made to pay child support. That and other alimony to me and child support for the unborn child. And you have to pay for your children's living expenses. And frankly speaking, he's going to have a harder life than if he were to actually get divorced. I think that'll be the case. And then, I got a call from my wife's parents. Of course, it was about our issue. They said they wanted to meet up and talk. I paid a visit to my wife's parents' house. As soon as they let me into the room, they both got on their knees and started to apologize. Michelle's really sorry about what happened. Of course, we know it's Michelle's fault. But being divorced and a single parent, I don't think it's good for the kids. Of course, she'll make amends. So please, can you give her a second chance? I shook my head at my father-in-law, who was pleading. I'm really sorry, but I'm not changing my mind about the divorce. Michelle cheated on me. She may be also pregnant with another man's child. Then, my father-in-law suggested that Michelle should take a DNA test before giving birth. If it's another man's child, she would get an abortion. If it's my child, she will give birth to it. When I asked if Michelle would agree to this, she said whoever the child belongs to, any decision would be decided after it was born. If that child isn't yours, we'll put it up for adoption, and if she gives birth to your child, I want to atone for his sins. I was angry at his response. Ha, huh, do you think a child's life is a tool to atone for sins? And just like that, while my wife's parents' mouths were still stuttering, I left their house. Afterwards, in order to get a divorce and fight for custody, I decided to hire a lawyer because I never wanted to see that unpleasant family again. I told my wife's family afterwards to only talk to me through my lawyer. In the meantime, I got a call from the other man's wife. The other day, I mailed a certified letter to your wife with something from my husband. If your wife's child is my husband's, he said he would pay for the expenses, but that he would never see her again. Is that so? My wife said that. Even if it's not my child, she says she'll still give birth to the child. I told the other man's wife. Is that so? But my husband doesn't want to raise the child, he said. Well, if it's for their convenience, so be it. I already conveyed that I had retained a lawyer, and that we would only communicate through our lawyers from now on. When I met and talked to the other man's wife, she said she would make her husband acknowledge and pay for child support. But her son is struggling financially, so asked to not be let down. As for me, I don't care either way about that issue either way. It's better if they talk to a lawyer. In the meantime, I was getting daily emails from my wife. 
I ignored most of them, but I did read some of them. The content was all the same. I'm sorry, for the sake of our children. I'm sorry you're now a single parent, and I hope you'll think about it. Please reconsider. The children are in a sensitive period of their lives. I'd rather they go to their original school than have to change schools. Her messages were all one-sided and selfish, and on another day, she sent me a letter with these words. I leave it to you to decide if you want to have the child. I am still your wife, and that wife is on the verge of giving birth to a child. Whether she will give birth to the child or not, you, the husband, should be the one to decide, and if the child's not yours, you can disown it. I'll do whatever you say. She had an affair with another man and got pregnant. Now she wants me to decide whether or not I want to have the baby or not? I really think my wife may have lost her mind. And so, I kept ignoring her emails. Suddenly, my wife came over to my parents' house. I was at work at the time, when I got a call from my mother. She said my wife was trying to bring the kids home from school. I really wanted to dash home right away, but it takes a long time to get from the office to my parents' house. I called my brother who runs a store near my parents' house and asked him to go to my parents' house to check up on them. I explained the situation to my workplace, and I was able to leave home early. When I got home, my house was full of commotion. My mother was watching the kids in the other room. My wife was crying and yelling. My brother was holding her down. My brother wanted to call the police. I told him I'd talk to them. My wife was making a ruckus, but then she calmed down. She was sitting on the couch, slumping her head. Please go home. The kids don't want to live with you. My wife looked up and glared at me. But I'm their mother. Children shouldn't be without their mother. From then on, no matter how many times I told her, she would say the same things over and over. We were going nowhere, so I called my wife's parents to come and pick her up. But these were her parents after all. For my daughter's sake, will you please temporarily return the children? We'll take good care of Michelle. Please, children really don't want to live without their mother. I don't want to say anything more. I'm overwhelmed because my head hurts. I understand the feelings of wanting to protect her because she's my daughter. I contacted you because I want you to take my wife away. It seems to have the opposite effect. Then, my father, who was in the fact room, came out. He breathed a long sigh. I know you love your child. By Kurt is our child. It's not fair to make my son, who's been hurt by infidelity, to suffer anymore. My father was a long-time office worker, but his face looked terrifying when angry. Maybe because of that, my parents-in-law took their daughter and quickly went home. After that, I worked with my lawyer to get a divorce for my wife. We agreed to divide our assets and I would pay her alimony. We also agreed on separate child support payments and that she would be able to see the children once a month. At a location designated by me, we reached a settlement. After that, I claimed a $45,000 settlement for my wife's lover to be paid in one lump sum. Later, my wife did a DNA test and confirmed that her lover was indeed the father. Her parents were apparently willing to accept the situation, and my ex-wife was willing to have the baby. My ex-wife was even willing to go to her lover's new workplace. However, in the end, it seems like she had a miscarriage. Thinking about the innocent child made my heart ache, but it was no longer my concern as we were divorced. After that, I ended up meeting again with the person who had sent the original letter. The sender, apparently after my wife's lover got fired, took over his position at the company. Thank you for your help. It's just a small token, he said as he handled me an envelope. I pushed the envelope back without looking inside. Perhaps you feel guilty, but I don't want this money. I've already received alimony, and I think it's better than continuing to be deceived. He seemed a little relieved by my words and smiled. He mentioned that the other guy was having a hard time at his new workplace. Serves him right, I thought. I know it's been a tough time for you too, Kurt. I hope you'll be happy. With that being said, I told him thank you and left. It was trying times caused by my ex-wife, but it seems to have settled down now. Regarding my children, the divorce caused them such stress. For that, I'm sorry, but my parents and my brother's family are nearby and my children seem happy about that. They've also settled in well at their new school, even though changing environments can be stressful. From here on out, I will pour my love in raising them up well. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Please subscribe to our channel.